My name's Joe. Some of you know me from the fire department management system. Uh, we're not doing that anymore for conflicts with another class. Well, oh, you ruined the surprise. Sorry. No. We're doing the network management system this semester. Um, my name's Joe. This is Matt Heffler. He's been in our class before. We worked on a project called Votebox that failed miserably. Terrible. Uh, it wasn't our fault. It was my fault. Uh, we're also working with Tom Rosansky, who put together this lovely presentation for us. And I'm just kind of uh, impromptu talking on top of that. So heavily took Peter's advice. We came up with a, a name for our alpha lease, regurgitated raisin bran. Um, we wanted to talk about our project. Um, so a network management tool, what does that mean? What are we talking about? Uh, I'm a network engineer, Matt's a network engineer, Tom's an awesome software engineer. Um, networks get pretty big. Uh, the biggest one you may have heard of is called the internet. Um, and there's literally millions of routers. Now, they're not all controlled by the same people. They're controlled by different groups, Verizon, AT&T. Um, who have big data centers, they have millions of routers, they need to control them, they need to manage what's connected to what, what addresses are in use, um, what version of code is running, and such. Um, these things get big, they're super. Uh, there's things that are called supernets, which are when you take defined um, subnets, based on, for anybody who take the NetLab classes, you can mail some from there. Um, there are 16 million device uh, networks, there are 65,000 device networks, and there are 256 device networks, roughly by default. Um, you make them bigger because that's not enough sometimes. So Sometimes too much, you make them smaller. Sometimes you make them smaller. So we're going to make this awesome tool uh, to manage networks. We're going to test it in the networking lab here at RPI, which has roughly 250 devices in it. Great chance to really see the scalability of the tool from small networks, small pods, um, 10, 11 devices, up to 250 devices and scale from there. We want it to be usable, we want it to be simple, we want it to be powerful but minimalistic, right? We're talking about hundreds of thousands of devices, and they're not going to be managed at the same time through one interface, right? But we do need to make this simple, it needs to be easy to use, because otherwise it would be pretty obnoxious, right? I mean, having to maintain all those devices either by hand, or uh, if you work at Cisco with Excel spreadsheets, it doesn't end well. Uh, you end up having overlapping IP address space. Uh, when that happens, you get black holes, you get routes that don't go anywhere, you get route suboptimal routing. Um, so here's our presentation. We're going to go into a more, less Peter format now. Um, so there's some current software out there, right? Anybody working on a project in our call should analyze the current market. We don't want to be duplicating the work. There are some tools out there for this, right? There has to be. The internet's a couple years old now, I think. Um, and people have to manage the devices. There's some tools called Rancid, which manages device configurations. It actually stores them in an SVN or CVS repository. It's kind of old school, SVN, CVS. Anybody use that here? <laughs> Get, right? We like Git. So we're going to store our configurations in Git. The nice thing about Git is it's serverless, right? So you don't need to have an SVN server or a CVS server to store your repositories. Wherever our application is running, you can store it right in your Git repository and then merge and branch from there. Um, there's another tool called Racksmith, which is actually pretty nice. It was made by uh, five CS guys. I forget what school they went to. The problem with Racksmith is it's a primarily physical layer um, tool for managing devices. So it's what kind of device you have, what racks are located in, on what floor and what building which is important, but it's not important for network engineers. That's important for operations staff when they have to go physically troubleshoot something. That doesn't help with keeping track of your network. So our software is amazing because we're going to take the best features of what's out there, configuration revisions, um, limited physical maintenance, logical diagramming, bring it all together under one tool, um, license it open source, and hopefully help out lots of people. I don't know what that slide was for. I blame Tom. Uh, that, that one too. <laughs> so, I ran through that kind of quick, Matt's on battery, um, but does anybody have any questions or would like me to elaborate a little bit more on that? Some of you are familiar, I know you've taken the networking classes here. Yeah. I guess I'm not particularly familiar with networking, but uh, a couple semesters ago there was another Arcus project on networking, it was the Internet Network Management software. Yeah. Is this so that was made by Matt O'Brien. Um, despite its name, that was a completely different project. He was making a tab telnet client. Yeah, um, so I guess then, as someone who's not familiar with networks, yeah. what exactly is your purpose? So what his, he, yeah, his was a telnet client which you used to connect to a router or switch and configure it right type command command line interface. Um, we're not working on the, um, con the configurations themselves. We're not working on a tool that connects to a switch um, and gives you an interface to type to it configure it. What we're doing is creating a tool that graphs your network, that keeps track of what IP addresses you've allocated, 
um, that keeps track of what interfaces you have, what version of code, stores the configuration revisions. revisions. Um, Matt O'Brien's tool was primarily geared for the NetLab here at RPI, um, for the NetLab courses for people who ran Linux to connect to their pods very simply. Um, so his was an interface, a tool to, for you to do something. Our tool is going to be an automated tool that um, automatically gets information using SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, um, and other things as well to get information about devices, keep track of it. Did that explain your question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what kind of information are you going to have to give to this tool for it to know where to scan and stuff like that? Like how much user input is going to be required? Just a range of IPs and ports. It yep. will scan automatically? <clears throat> yep. It'll do, an, it'll do a uh, subnet scan. You'd have to give it, uh, depending on how you're managing it, whether you do it through telnet and text parsing, which we're hoping to do as little as possible of, um, or if you use SNMP, there are security measures there. You can't just have it automatically to connect via SNMP. So there's a little bit of information, but for the most part, the idea is here to be automated. Again, we're talking about huge networks. Um, Matt and I are graduating. Matt's graduating in December. I'm graduating in May. We're planning on being network engineers, you know, probably an ISP or a big bank or something like that. Um, and from what we've seen so far, our internships and co-ops, they use like Excel and paper and email to track things. Yeah, it's really bad. Like 70% of all networks are undocumented. And who wants to waste time physically troubleshooting wires? I think Tom gave me a book that stated 70% of all network problems are physical layers. So we're going to keep track of that through, um, through uh, Embedded Event Manager, Tickle Scripting and such, built in SNMP. So it should be fun. Sorry for all those buzzwords. I know Peter said we shouldn't use those, but I kind of want you guys to learn something. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Great. Uh, yes. Uh, it's more of a comment. I can't believe ISPs don't have a tool like this to map out their networks. Some of them do. The ones, um, I don't know if any of you read the Packet Life blog, packetlife.net, is run by this guy Jeremy Stretch, uh, who was actually just the other day asking for a tool just like this. Because the ones that are out there, um, they're either limited or they suck. Or strictly um, physical layer. Or strictly we're physical layer. Which is important. Again, we're not trying to say it's not, but there are tools out there that do that. Um, for operations staff, but as network engineers, we need everything we've seen and what we've heard and talked to people, um, there's just not a tool like that yet. So, yeah, so I don't know much about networking either, though this presentation is helping a lot. Uh, what, would you be here towards large networks, or would I be able to like run it on? Should the scale. Okay, like perfect scale? <coughs> Hopefully, yeah. Soho to enterprise. Probably not ISP because that's ridiculous, okay. but <laughs> sub-particles of the ISP should right. be. You're going to have network segmentation anyway. Always. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you. Great. Thanks so much.